Joe Biden announced yesterday an executive order coming down from on high, and it is a disaster. I mean, an absolute disaster for gun rights in the United States. We're going to talk through everything here. The biggest problem is he's not targeting criminals. He's targeting you and me and things that we legally do with firearms that he's trying to criminalize. We're going to talk about every single one of the big things in there. There was a lot that was like, mm, we'll see what he means by this when it gets implemented because it was written in very vague terms. But let's take the parts that are disastrous. First, Biden wants to basically redefine what it means to be engaged in the business of selling firearms. So that's the test for needing an FFL, like your local gun shop. What he's trying to do is take normal gun owners and try to change what engaged in the business means so that more people have to go through the incredible amount of rigor and moral to get a federal firearms license, an FFL. So we'll see how, how far they decide to push it. Will it be, oh, if you sell three, five firearms in a year, you have to get your FFL. That'd be a huge problem. What about a gun collector who may have a hundred or hundreds of firearms? That could be a huge problem for them. Also engaged in the business of firearms, what if you sell a firearm at all for profit? Is that engaged in the business of selling firearms? I'm curious to see how far they push it, but that one could be really bad for the individual gun owner, especially because remember, this is an executive order. This is trying to, not trying, it is circumventing Congress. We'll see how, how legal it ends up being, but that's what he's trying to do. Just say, ah, we're just going to change that definition and start enforcing it, throw some people in prison, and we'll see if the courts come after us, right? So that one, I, that could be bad. Then the next one, Basically, if you've surrendered an FFL, make it so you can't get it back, uh, is what he's trying to do. And if your FFL's been revoked, make sure they never get it back. Well, the revocation of FFLs has been crazy. It's increased over 500% under Biden. I looked over the first two months of 2023. This is public data from the ATF. And so if they audited an FFL in 2023, 2.7% of those audited had their FFL revoked. That means you just lost your business. Most of them are innocent mistakes. I've been to hundreds, hundreds of gun stores, way too many gun stores. And I have, I just don't see crazy stuff happening. You walk through SHOT Show and there are so many booths of companies that help with compliance to make sure you have your paperwork perfect. But they're trying to take, if you forget, you know, the dash, in, in a serial number or something, yep, remove that license. It's just absolute crazy the way that they're going after FFLs. The next one, publicly released to the fullest extent permissible by law, the inspection of FFL dealers cited for violations of the law. Now, I actually thought that was already public, so I'm a little bit confused on that one, but look at the order of this. It's like, take regular gun owners, make them get an FFL, and then, We'll try to take away their FFL as quickly as we can, and then we're going to dox them. We're going to make all their information public. And then next, we're going to put pressure on carriers to not ship firearms, which uh, is how I would decode the sentence. The Secretary of Transportation, that's Pete Buttigieg, who's really good at his job, in consultation with the Department of Justice, shall work to reduce the lost, loss or theft of firearms during shipment between FFLs and report such losses and thefts, uh, including by engaging with shippers and carriers. Basically, they saw weakness from UPS. They said, hey, maybe we can convince these guys to just stop shipping firearms. And if they did that, if we lost carriers to ship firearms, it could be much more expensive to get firearms because we'd have to go through much smaller companies. That could be a, a disastrous scenario. So here, Mr. Guns and Gear made a really good point that they make us put on the outside that it's a firearm. And so it's so obvious what it is. It's like when you get a box from Apple, an iPhone or something, they put it in a very nondescript cardboard box and don't, doesn't even say Apple on there. They use a different name on there to make it seem as nondescript as possible. With firearms, it's got to say firearms on it. So it's going to increase the theft. So they've created the problem and now they're trying to destroy our rights from the problem that they have created. 
It's absolutely ridiculous. All right, now, the next one I admittedly was not very familiar with. Um, he's bringing back something called the Undetectable Firearms Act and asking to have that modernized. So this was done to, in, when it was created, the idea was to ban the Glock 17 from being sold in the United States. Polymer, right? All the other guns were metal, and now we're bringing in a polymer-framed firearm and receiver. And so um, this was basically they're saying, well, you couldn't detect it in a, in a metal detector, and so we're going to ban this thing. Well, that was disingenuous. Even at that time, but this is an old law, even at that time, metal detectors could definitely detect the amount of metal that was in there. But the NRA struck a deal with them, of course, they compromised because they're the NRA, and they went down to 105 grams of steel. So the law says you have to have 105 grams of steel in a firearm, which is pretty light. I mean, any trigger is going to have 105 grams of steel in it. But what this is intended to do, modernizing it, we're going to try to increase it. The idea is to prevent 3D printed firearms. That, that's really what, what he's trying to do there, it seems. The next one is the scariest one for me and anybody else in firearms media. He's weaponizing the FTC. Biden has a, a history of doing this to extremes of taking independent government agencies that really are non-political. The FTC, the IRS, remember what happened with there when he was the vice president under Obama and they went after conservatives? He's taking non-political, non-partisan groups, parts of government, and weaponizing them to come after his political enemies. And so what it says is the Federal Trade Commission is encouraged to issue a public report analyzing how gun manufacturers market firearms to minors. Listen to that sentence make a report about how they market firearms to minors. They don't. Look, this is the same thing that happened recently with a certain medical thing in the United States, right? They just, the government sponsors studies that will show this, right? It, they already put the conclusion in how they asked for the study. Show us how they market to minors, not if they do, but how they do, right? Firearms manufacturers don't market to minors. They just don't, right? And so what they're gonna try to do is weaponize the FTC to fine and come after anyone in media of, uh, about firearms. <sighs> that, one is, that one is just not how our government should work. Shouldn't we be talking about violent video games? That's a conversation that I'd be willing to have. You know, we're talking about um, firearms danger among youth. The video games that they're playing for hours a day are horrific. I mean, just disgusting. They're terrible. Um, and, you know, we're wondering why some of these youth end up fantasizing about things like that. Maybe it's because of what we're putting in their brains all the time. But that's never the discussion. Okay, then the two big ones. I want to slow down on these. Universal background checks is what he's really pushing, what he really wants. What he said is, we want universal background checks. If we can't get them, we're going to push as close as we possibly can to getting there, which is where he's trying to make everybody become an FFL. So let's talk about it slowly because on its surface, this is something that I, as a gun owner, would support. I would support this. If I were to be selling a gun private party, not through a, a gun dealer, if I were to sell it private party, I would like to be able to know that the person I'm selling it to is not a prohibited person. I want that. I have zero desire whatsoever to have a gun that I had owned end up in the wrong hands. I would like that. And so a lot of times the argument for universal background checks gets supported by gun owners who don't really understand what we're talking about. So imagine this went through. Imagine Congress passed a law that you had to have universal background checks all across the nation. Private party sale, you know, buying from your local gun shop. Anytime there's, there's a transfer of a firearm, you have to do a background check. Well, let's say they came after me and said, aha, Jim, you sold a firearm and it ended up in the hands of a criminal somehow. We're prosecuting you now, Jim. And so how would they prove it? Well, 
they would have to have a registry of if I had performed a background check on the person that I sold it to, right? So now they would have to have a registry of every single gun in the United States. Otherwise, it would be impossible to prosecute this. That's a huge problem, right? As soon as there's a registry of who owns a firearm, you better believe sooner or later the stormtroopers are coming. That's a huge problem for me. So that's one issue with universal background checks. The other issue is just a practical one. I should be able to loan a firearm to my brother who's going on a deer hunt, something like that. Ah, if I'm transferring a firearm, they want to come after me. Um, you know, this, it also just does not work. You know, I lived in Brazil for two years and in Brazil, it's extremely difficult to going through the government to even get a firearm at all even much more difficult to legally be able to take it out of the home and use a firearm to shoot to shoot it even for recreation. Very difficult. They don't have a gun culture hardly at all in Brazil. We do have some Brazilians on this channel who frequently comment. They are in the minority for sure. And yet, Brazil had 40,000 murders using firearms. And so th there's the core of the problem. The criminals don't care what the law is. That's what, by definition, makes them criminals, right? And so when you make a law, well, you can't carry a firearm for personal protection outside the home. Well, do the criminals care? No, they don't. They're a criminal. That's the definition of a criminal. They break laws. And so it only ends up hurting the law-abiding people who are trying to protect themselves and their family responsibly. Okay, so that's problem with universal background checks, among others. The next is red flag laws. This is another one that I want to slow down on because, again, I went out and interviewed some gun owners in a recent video to see what they thought of it, just people on the street. And I was really surprised how many gun owners say, yeah, I would support red flag laws, again, who don't really understand what they're supporting. So the idea of a red flag law is if somebody is, you know, making public statements about fantasizing about doing a mass incident or something, or perhaps it's a domestic violence thing, somebody's threatening a spouse with a firearm, we should go in and we should take their firearms so that they can't commit the crime. Now, again, as a firearm owner and just to like try to be a decent human being, I would support that. I don't think I want firearms in the hands of evil people who are bent on doing evil things. I totally support that. But that's not really what we're talking about because it's immediately misused by the left to try to just weaken citizens. And so what this what happens is one there's no due process. That's kind of the point of the ver of a red flag law is we're just going to take it quickly before you can do anything. Well, you need due process if you want to take somebody's firearms. Otherwise, we have no Second Amendment. If they can take it away because they think, eh, this guy's kind of threatening. Look at him. He has a cut on his forehead. The man's dangerous. We got to take his, his firearms away. That is absolutely going to be abused. Plus, we look at states that have red flag laws, even very strong red flag laws, and we see California, number one, for uh, active shooter incidents and number one for gun control, according to an article from Breitbart. That's a huge problem, right? And the other issue is, this is $231 million was spent to implement red flag laws in the recent bipartisan Community Safety Act um, that we're going to talk about who Republicans voted for that. We need to always remember what happened there. Um, I'm sorry, it doesn't take $231 million to implement what they're talking about. They're not talking about adding any new police, certainly not, right? They're not talking about due process steps. That's not it. So $231 million, according to gun controllers, is basically going to advocacy. They're trying to get this information out there about red flag laws to hoodwink us gun owners into falling for a zero due process ability for the government to just take away their guns because they don't like the cut of your jib. <sighs> we need to be care beware of wolves in sheep's clothing who are not friends to the Second, Second Amendment. 
You are a voter. Get out there and vote when the time comes. We did not show up for midterm elections like we need to. And now Biden is trying to circumvent even those who we elected to enact the things he wants. This is going to ramp up absolutely over the next couple of years, um, especially the next year as it's leading into election. This seems to be something that he's going to be running on is gun control. And so we need to vote. Thanks, everybody. See you in the next video.